This presentation includes forward-looking statements that are subject to risks and uncertainties. Actual results may differ materially as a result of various risk factors, including those described in the 10Ks, 10Qs and 8Ks VMware files with the SEC. Great to be with you all. We have a record attendance of 13,000 people here, so we thought we'd get you a live band. What do you guys think of the show so far? It's been, a great, it's been a great day. Thank you for the great keynotes, and thank you for all being here. Some fantastic announcements. I'm super excited to uh, host today's keynote. We've got a lot of exciting things over the course of the next 90 minutes, so giddy up. Uh, as we think about what's going on in this world, you know, there are lots of different things in which you could think about VMware. We've been known as a server virtualization company. Over time, we've tried to now be known as the data center. We'd like to be now known as the cloud infrastructure company. But there are two engines that fuel VMware that haven't changed over the 20 years of our existence. One is innovation. This company believes that what we can do not just in technology and go to market, but starting with technology, is groundbreaking. Starting off with research by a husband and wife team that transformed what could be done in an x86 architecture. And much of you knew that early form of VSX has been the key aspect. But just as important to us has been an obsession with customer satisfaction. These two engines are sort of like the two engines of a plane. A lot of companies have incredible innovation, but they don't really care a lot about their customers. A lot of companies care about their customers, but don't have a lot of pipeline of innovation. When you can bring these two together, you get magic. And the plane can go a long way. And that's what we've been focused on. Innovation, from the beginning of the, the, the advent of this company, server virtualization, fundamental, doing something that was exponentially better, not just incrementally, better, exponentially better. Um, 2009, I went to look back at some of the first patents that we filed. We were one of the first in the industry to invent software-defined storage. And driving the same software-defined aspect to every aspect of infrastructure. Then in 2012, when we announced the acquisition of NICERA, the world took notice when we said there was a different way to do networking with software-defined networking. And then as we put together the notion of a software-defined digital workspace, bringing together disparate technologies, virtual desktops, mobility, identity, I was very fortunate to lead that part of the business for the first three years of my five years here at VMware. Tremendously exciting what's going to happen in that area, which we'll talk about. And through the course of this year, and with what's going to last us for many of the last two years, we've been really focused on this notion of a hybrid cloud multi-cloud, and making networking something that ties together all of these aspects, what we call virtual cloud networking. This has been our theme. Innovation starts everything. But just as important has been that obsession with customer satisfaction. And this is all of you getting to vote on what we, uh, the industry ranks as net promoter score. There's an organization called Temkin Research that ranks, just like the J.D. Powers of organizations that rank uh, airlines, ranks uh, companies that we've been very fortunate in the last five years to be ranked in the top five and this year number one. And we've taken that to a whole new level. Our customer support organizations rolled out now a solution called Skyline. Uh, it allows, with your permission, to track telemetry and uh, take much of that information and make our support processes not just reactive but extremely proactive. A thousand customers of you have already signed up. I would encourage every one of you to be all over Skyline. We're going to take customer success to a whole new level. But the story of VMware is very simple. I want to just boil this down. I like to call it Sesame Street simple. Because, you know, Da Vinci said there is a tremendous amount of, of sophistication in simplicity. At the core of what we do in a data center, you could think of it like a human body. Computes like the heart. Maybe storage is like the lungs that store stuff. Networking is like your nervous system. And management's like the brain. It pulls it all together. And when you do things in software, you fundamentally transform the data center. But that data center, as it moves to the cloud, needs a way by which you don't have to redo those applications. And that's the journey of the hybrid cloud. The same type of journey uh, happens in the world of the desktop moving mobile into the edge. 
all centered around the core premise that applications, applications are what infrastructure serves. Without ap applications, uh, infrastructure wouldn't exist. And what ties us all together is security. That's very simply put our one chart. When I share this with our sales teams, I say this one chart, if you have to present our story with 100 PowerPoints, you probably have very little power and no point. Okay? So we want to make this very simple to you. Now, this impact across has been tremendous over the years. It's impacted the way in which we think about cost. It's impacted the way in which we've reduced complexity. It's impacted the way in which we've reduced carbon, the three Cs, as I like to call them. The collective impact has been profound. And if you take that first part, vSphere, these were some of the first things we saw when we started the company. I wasn't here, but I heard stories about this that are legendary. People would send us their electricity bills and said, this is what vSphere did for us, ESX did for us before and after. Here's the electricity bill. It's in, in US dollars because you know, the company was in the America base there. 80% reduction in something as simple as the way in which you do uh, your, your cost management of, of power. And that impact was tremendous over the years. Uh, thanks to you, the company over the course of 20 years has accumulated about 50 billion in revenue. Last year, we ended up somewhere around 8 billion in revenue and continuing to grow. One of the fastest growing software companies of all time. And I pulled up a study that was done in 2000, 2006, I think, of the economic impact that VMware has had. And that time, we just had one or two products, maybe compute and management. And it showed in that report that every dollar spent on VMware resulted in between nine and $26 of economic impact in 2006. I could argue that economic impact's actually grown as our product portfolio has grown. But let's just say we take somewhere in between that nine and 26 and round it up to a 10. That 50 billion of collector revenue over the 20 years has resulted in 10x of economic value to that. So half a trillion of economic value to you. And we're not done. This is one of the stories that's been the most legendary uh, of all time in terms of economic impact. And that's what I wanted to, to continue to, to impress on you as you think about the future products. So we have 500,000 customers, I think roughly about 200,000 in EMEA. If you have experienced that type of economic ben benefit on compute, the first way in which you can embark on the, the journey in the private cloud is with software-defined storage and hyper-converged infrastructure. It is the easiest way to begin that journey. Compute, storage, and management together, and the economic impact is just as profound. We did some studies with uh, IDC and a few other analysts and found that CapEx savings could be 40%, OpEx savings almost 60%, and the ROI in triple digits. Amazing what storage can do for you. It's the first place you can start. But not to be outdone, networking is a little trickier. But let me walk you through why this could also have a tremendous impact on you. Typically, when we looked at networking problems today, uh, pre the use of software-defined networking, they look like this. 35% is spent, 30% spent uh, on hardware, maybe a little bit of 5% odd on software, and 65% on labor-oriented tasks. Okay? And now, the labor-oriented tasks, you just don't you know, kind of see, but it starts to accumulate because everything is manual. And let me give you the perfect example of a manual type of task in life that if you saw today, you said, why would you do that? Imagine that you printed out a document and you manually spell-checked every word. If you did that to you, you'd be listen, it's going to be error prone, and there's a wonderful thing called a spell check. Why don't you do it? It's software defined spell check. It's the same thing in networking. You'd be surprised how many of these tasks can be radically transformed through software. Okay, when you apply that principle, that chart starts to look significantly different. Certainly, you reduce a little bit of what you're doing because you extend the life of your hardware. We're not telling you you've got to rip out Cisco or Rister or Juniper. You optimize the use of your underlay and and, and, and just going to invest more in the overlay, that uh, investment in OPEX comes down significantly. And that's even before you think about some of the new areas that we are investing significantly going into the future. For example, just came out a few weeks ago was the Gartner Magic Quadrant on software-defined WAN. And who would have thought that VMware is the top right spot in networking? What do you guys think? Isn't that incredible? Thanks to every one of you who has invested in Velo Cloud, we are just getting started. Networking is going to be huge. So when you put this together then with management, we could talk to the heart, the lungs, the nervous system, management's the brain. So what does the brain do? It automates everything. That's the first A. Then it provides analytics. And then, of course, the part that I find most exciting, artificial intelligence. Okay? 
And we're going to bring the power of artificial intelligence to make that same SDDC, which was the software-defined data center, the, the self-driving data center in the future. And you'll find things like Watson that we announced yesterday with support, making that a whole lot better. So when you put this all together, this is the money chart. If you weren't paying any attention to my, my slides, I see a few cameras coming up. This is the chart you want to capture, OK? Because it encompasses now, once you've got that foundation, where should you deploy this? Should you deploy this in a private cloud or a public cloud? Here's the study we did, again, with a group of analysts with 1,000 VMs and said, listen, let's take a traditional hardware um, architecture with a little bit of software virtualization. It costs for that type of environment 4.5 million euros, OK? Traditional on-prem with a little bit of virtualization. Now you go full on the full SDDC stack on-premise, you reduce the cost quite a bit, 2.9 million, million euros with an on-premise infrastructure, private cloud, full software-defined data center. Now you have a choice. You want to take that app and redo it, refactor it, migrate it to the public cloud. On the surface, it's a little cheaper. But when you add up the cost of refactoring and migrating that app, it gets more expensive. We think the most economic uh, option, and validated by some of our analyst friends, is this hybrid cloud option of deploying this in a VMware cloud. Like, for example, VMware Cloud, 80 we get a 40% reduction. So it's profound. Okay, uh, what we can do for you as you think about the economic impact of, of all of this. So summary, the data center moves to the cloud. We want to ensure with you a timeless okay, way in which you can think about economic impact. Whether you choose the private cloud or the public cloud, you need VMware in both environments. The top part of that same uh, diagram that I talked about is where we want to go to next, which is the data center moved cloud, and now how does the world of the desktop move mobile into the edge, OK? Uh, and I think that that's also very profound, because if you think about the 7 billion people uh, that are in the world, maybe a billion of them are working, maybe 2 billion of them are working for some company or the other today, and every one of them has a phone, OK? In some countries, um, people are getting to the internet now directly on the phone and not through a laptop. Many of those billion people have a laptop and a phone. And that landscape today, what we would call a fleet of devices, of end-user computing devices, are in one of these three forms of operating systems. They're Apple, Google, Microsoft. When I did my first keynote here five years ago, I asked people how many people had iPhones, how many people had Android phones. And then you know, I asked how many people had a Windows phone and BlackBerry, and one person raised their hand, and I said, I'd pray for them. Okay? But that world has changed. I'm not going to do that survey now again. But nonetheless, today, all of you probably have an Apple iPhone or an Android phone, and you have a laptop that's either Windows 10 or Mac. And Windows 10, thanks to Microsoft, they've actually gotten better. So this world has now become one where the heterogeneous uh, landscape of laptop, tablet, and phone has to be managed and secured by a Switzerland vendor. That's not tied to one or the other. It's very hard for Microsoft to manage Apple devices, or Apple to map on Google devices. They just don't build core integration and engineering together. That's what we've done. And what we've also done is taken together very disparate spaces. This, spa this industry has always been amazing to me because it's VDI and MDM and IDM. It's just a whole a alphabet soup of acronyms. And what we've created is a mountain of morass. No offense to any of these vendors. They're all very good. And then a whole bunch of labor to pull it together that costs you probably of the order of 44 euros per month to integrate. And we want to make this at least 70% cheaper with Workspace ONE. That's the economic impact that we're trying to create uh, in the end user landscape. And what do we do as we did this? And there's some lessons that I would share with you uh, as we did this, both from the engineering perspective and working with you. It starts with the way in which you bring together two very simple concepts of simplicity and security. When you go on your life's journey, you don't lug around uh, 3,000 CDs for music. Music comes to you on iPod and iPhone and iTunes. That's simplicity. Why do you have all this experience that's so complex in the world? We've got to learn a lesson or two, the enterprise companies from consumer companies in making things simple. Vice versa, the consumer companies now are starting to learn a lot about security. Let's see what's happened to Facebook this year. When we can bring these two together, there's absolute magic in consumer simplicity and enterprise security. We took this to heart, and we put all of our product managers and our end user computing team, and actually now many parts of VMware, through the Stanford Design School. Okay? And it brings together some very simple principles of viability, desirability, and feasibility. 
where you could bring together business people and technology and train your product managers to think in the mind of a consumer or customer. And it's amazing what results in terms of design-centric thinking. It's a very applicable concept. I'm not making a plug here for specifically the Stanford Design School, but many of these design school principles here in Europe also. What's resulted is similar to that uh, description I showed to you, networking. Nobody would have thought of VMware in the networking space, okay, 20 years ago or even 5, 10 years ago. Nobody would have thought about VMware in the mobility space. And here we are, thanks to every one of you, and you know, I think 60, 70,000 customers in end user computing, we've stayed number one the last four or five years and plan to stay that way. So as I summarize, this picture kind of orients everything we're trying to get done, right? The data center, making it with software look like the cloud. Help you in that journey to the hybrid cloud, whether it's a public cloud, multi-cloud. And then in the world of the workplace, ensure that you have all of this ability to work at the speed of life so you can pick up any app on any device. And that entire world will also help you move to the edge. So that's just a sum summary of the bigger picture you saw from Pat yesterday, okay, of this world of any cloud, uh, whether it's IT, whether it's the hybrid cloud, going public cloud, or the telco cloud, or the edge cloud. The world of any app, not just the traditional apps, SaaS apps, but also cloud native, and of course the world of devices. We think that this is a tremendous opportunity for us to be innovating up and down this picture for years to come. I think we first shared this picture five years ago, and I think we could be doing this for the next five, 10 years easily, because there's so much to get down, done up and down the stack. And we could not do this without you.